Now, it's no secret that the cost of living has skyrocketed over the last few years, but here in Florida, it's on a whole nother level. Areas like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, and here in my hometown, Tampa, Clearwater, St. Pete, we're still experiencing post-pandemic growth. Now, the upside of all that growth is Tampa is becoming more diverse. It's attracting a lot of young talent, incredible businesses, and stunning real estate developments. But with all that growth, you get a lot of new challenges. And one of those challenges is the ridiculous inflation that has come along with it. Sir Isaac Newton said it best, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And our bank accounts are feeling that reaction. If you're watching this video, it's most likely because you're considering buying, selling, or relocating here in the Tampa Bay area. And honestly, I made this video for you. If not, that's okay. You're gonna get a lot of value from this too. So here's what to expect. We'll cover the current cost of living here in Tampa Bay and in Florida, how we got here, and what the future looks like so you can make the best possible decision about your future relocation or investments. Now, if we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay, what it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. I'm also a real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group, and we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. So if that interests you, make sure you save this video. That way you don't have to go chasing down the next one. Now, I usually make a cost of living video at the beginning of every year, but I read two articles this week that shocked me and I really had to share them with you. Now, the first one came from Wallet Hub, and it said that Tampa Bay has the second highest inflation in the US, coming in at 6.7%. And if you've been following the economy at all, you may know that the current inflation is hovering right around 3.7%. So to see that we're a full three points higher really kind of shook me. But as I thought through it, and I started to recognize what kind of money we've been spending, honestly, it didn't surprise me that much because I can feel it. And so can my wife. She lets me know every time she goes and gets groceries. So that was the first article. Now the second article came from Redfin and it said a home buyer had to make $114,627 in order to afford the median home price here coming in at $420,000 in the US. Now at the time of this recording, here in the greater Tampa Bay area, the median sales price is right around $415,000. So we're a little bit low, but that is a lot of income that most people don't make. As a matter of fact, the article said it was about $40,000 more than the average household makes. So what I wanted to do is I actually wanted to build a budget with you here in Florida, and I'm gonna use a few different things. I'm gonna use today's current interest rate, which came in at a whopping 8%. Depending on when you watch this, this might be different, but we're actually gonna show you a mortgage calculator and what it looks like to buy that $415,000 home right now. I'm gonna share my expenses. I'm gonna show you my Duke energy bill, which is my electric. Um, we're gonna talk about our pool. We're gonna talk all the things that you wanna know when it comes to making a Florida relocation or an investment in reality. So we're gonna get into that in detail. And here's, here's what I have to preface this by. I'm positioning this conversation as a, this is what it costs to live here. And when I mean live, I mean live, not survive. You can do it for a lot less, I am sure. And some of you are gonna watch this and you'll be like, wow, that's a joke. We spend that every single six months, right? Or we spend that every month. Totally understand that as well. But I'm basing this conversation off the average, y'all. So walk with me. I don't think we're that far out of the ordinary. We have a four bedroom, two bath, a 2,000 square foot home with a pool here. We're not in a flood zone. So it's gonna give you a really good perspective on you know what it would look like to live here in Florida. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to the bank rate calculator and we're gonna plug in $415,000 because that's the median price here in the greater Tampa Bay area. Now, listen, the average home is right around 550. You can absolutely find homes in that 400 range, um, but they're gonna need work and they're gonna be smaller. So I just wanna give you some perspective on that so everybody can kind of just frame everything. But let's go with this median number that Redfin pulled out, 415,000. We're gonna say that you're putting 10% down because that is pretty average. Um, we deal with a lot of clients who relocate to the area. Some of them pay cash for just about everything. Others finance everything and they go FHA and only put three and a half percent down but what we usually see is people put about 10 percent down when they buy a house so in this case it's going to be forty one thousand five hundred dollars now i'm going to walk you through this math here really quick right so jumping over the bank rate calculator here's what we got we got twenty seven hundred and nineteen dollars for principal and interest you're going to pay about uh, three hundred and seventy five dollars a month in taxes you're gonna pay uh, roughly $208 a month for homeowner's insurance, because that's right, right about what I pay. You're gonna pay $171 in mortgage insurance, and this is called PMI, just so you know, which is gonna get the month
monthly mortgage payment is $3,494 or $3,500. Wow. So just start to wrap your mind around that because when people hear numbers like $115,000 for the average person to live in an area, they're like, that's not true. Well, look at today's numbers, 8% interest rate, right? A $3,500 mortgage. Now, that's just the mortgage. We haven't even talked about utility, cars, food and dining, and we're gonna get on all that. So let's look at my utility bill. As you can see here, my electric bill, and we don't have gas in our house, we only have electric. My electric bill is averaging right around $420 for the year. So we're just gonna say you're 400 bucks. For water and sewer, that's right around $75 a month for each, so that's an additional $150 for both. We pay roughly $50 a month for trash. Yes, you gotta have your trash picked up here too. So now we're another $600 for utilities. So we're at $3,500 for our mortgage and then adding another $600 to that for utilities. That brings us up to $4,100 so far. Now let's talk about cars. Some of you may already have car payments, most of you probably will, or you may have your cars paid off, that's fine. But what I wanna do is prep you if you have to move to Florida and buy your own cars, okay? Right now, according to bankrate.com, the average new car payment is $729 a month. And listen, I know that to be true, y'all. We just had to turn in our lease and get a new vehicle, and it was painful. We own one of our cars outright, haven't had a payment on that in five years, but I lease a vehicle for Kate. That way she always has a car that is running and is in good shape. And our lease deals have always been wonderful, but when we turned this thing in, man, I was in for sticker shock. So that 729 does not surprise me at all. But the thing that did shock me was that used cars are averaging $528 a month, and it just blew my mind. So. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna assume that you're paying about $1,100 a month for, for the two auto payments, okay? I know that's a lot to some, others of you not paying anywhere near that. Some of you have Escalade payments that are more than that. I get it, but let's just assume for the sake of averages that we are $1,100 a month just for the auto payments. My personal insurance is $5,000 a year and that number literally doubled when we moved from Michigan to Florida. So I know that to be true. Let's say that both of you drive to work daily and that you have to fill those tanks up every single week and we're just gonna assume that you pay $50 per vehicle each week, which is gonna give us roughly $400 a month in gas. I'm also gonna assume that you change the oil every 5,000 miles and we're just gonna roll that into a monthly budget and say that you're paying $35 a month to, to maintain those vehicles as well. That's gonna bring our automotive total to $1,700 a month. If you add that $1,700 to the $5,100 you already had for housing and utilities, now you're up to $6,800 a month for just housing, utilities, and automotive. We haven't even talked about food, dining, health, insurance, uh, student loan debt, credit card. There's so much more going on here. Let's keep running with these numbers. Now, food and dining is the category. This is the one that shocks people. And this is where I personally feel the most inflation. And my wife makes a joke now that she goes into Publix grocery store and comes out with two bags and it's $100. I mean, and she's not kidding, by the way. Remember, we have a family of five. I've got three kids, right? So it's me, my wife, and three kids. We spend, on average, $2,000 a month between food and dining. We do go out as a family. Usually once a week, we'll go have pizza or something. Nothing crazy lavish, um, but my wife and I do like to go have date night. We will splurge there. So I'm just sharing and being genuine with you guys. Um, we don't shop at Walmart for groceries. We shop at Publix and Sprouts. We don't shop at Whole Foods. So we try to moderate there, but like it is nothing for us to spend $2,000 on groceries. So if you add that $2,000 to the 6,800, we're now at $8,800 a month just to operate our household. And again, we haven't dealt with any other debt if you have it. We haven't dealt with school loans. We haven't dealt with uh, health insurance. We haven't dealt with anything else. So let's keep rolling on this. Now, when I looked up health insurance, it said that the average household was spending about $500 a month. Now, I don't know who you are out there that is only spending $500 a month in health insurance, but God bless you, congratulations. I am self-employed. Just to get off the ground, it's roughly about $1,500 a month for us. So this is extremely different, but I'm just going off the averages. It says it's roughly $500 a month. Now it also said that the average household has about $500 a month in student loan debt. So if you don't, great. You do not have to add that in your category, obviously. But some of you have student loan bills that are more than mortgages. So make sure you take those into account, but we're gonna call that $500 because that's what the national average is. Phone and internet, I'm gonna say that's roughly about 300 bucks. We pay about $65 
$25 for our internet. We have a, a gigabyte up and a gigabit down, which is really fast. That's awesome. And we have Verizon. Um, we have the um, Anytime Anything plan um, for me, my wife, and my dad is on there too. And we pay we pay about $300 a month for that alone, but we're just gonna say that it's probably about 200 and some change. And then you add the internet on there. So for phone and internet both combined for you, you're probably gonna be paying somewhere around $300 a month. And lastly, I want to put in this miscellaneous because there's always something that comes up in around your household, your trips to Target. You know, maybe you've got a dog and you're feeding them and that wasn't your food and dining. You know, maybe you like to go to the beach and, you know, maybe you just take care of people on the weekends. Whatever that is, we want to make sure that we give you some flexibility in that budget. But let's just assume that's another $500 a month. So all that totals up to about another $1,800 a month. And I'm leaving out childcare because I don't know if you have childcare or not. Some of you don't have children, some of you do. If you do have children, it is going to be an additional $1,000 a month, depending on how many kids you have. If you only have one, it probably won't cost you that much. But if you have two, I know parents out there that are spending well over $1,000 a month. So put that in your back pocket. I'm leaving that off this budget, but if you do have kids and you do need childcare, make sure you add that in as well. So once we do that, that gets us to roughly $10,600 per month. And here's what we have not addressed yet, which we still need to add to this. We still have to add both savings and taxes because once you start earning over six figures, you're probably gonna owe Uncle Sam a little bit of money. Now, how much? I don't know. This really depends on you, what your tax categories are, all kinds of things, right? There's a lot of variance that comes into play there, but here's what I know. Anytime I have earned over six figures, I have always had to pay the tax man. I'm self-employed. I know this is different, but I also have friends who are high six figure earners who are W2 who have to pay the tax man every year as well. So make sure you take that into account. And we didn't even talk about savings. So what, what I do in that, in that bucket here for the budget is I would assume that you're gonna add about another 20% on top of what you're already making in order to make that work. And let's run these numbers. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab my calculator. We're gonna go from the 10 six that we're at. I'm gonna multiply that times 0.2. That's gonna get me to 2120. Um, on top of 10.6. So that's gonna bring us to $12,720 a month is what you need to make to live here in the greater Tampa Bay area. Now, I'm not talking about surviving, like I said before. We're not talking about living off a of ramen every single day. We're talking about what does it cost to actually live. Now, again, some of you are laughing. You're like, I could not survive on $12,000 a month. Others of you are trying to figure out who in the heck is making $12,000 a month. And I know that's true because at the end of 2022, according to the United States Census Bureau, the average Floridian household is only bringing in $65,000 a year. So the question then becomes, how did we get here? Because for years, Florida was known as the land of milk and honey for almost no money. Retirees have been flocking here for literally generations, right? It has been known as one of the most affordable places in the entire country, but so much has changed. The question is why? The pandemic opened up a Pandora's box. It created the perfect environment for the great relocation where two thirds of Americans decided to move. Number one was access to remote work. Prior to the pandemic, only 4% of the jobs in the United States were described as remote, but that number jumped to over 26% in 2022. Number two was access to cheap debt. From August 2020 to August 2021, you could get a 30-year fixed rate mortgage for as low as 2.8%. Number three was affordability. People started moving away from large urban areas like New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, and San Francisco to more affordable suburbs. And number four is lifestyle. People started moving to the Sun Belt, specifically areas like Phoenix, Atlanta, Dallas, Miami, and here at home in Tampa. And they were attracted for the exact same reasons that me and my family were. Economic growth, low taxes, business friendly, mild winters, and the fact that you do not have to shovel sunshine, and an overall great quality of living. So the state of Florida started to attract a lot of new residents. As a matter of fact, over a thousand people a day moved here for almost three straight years. It literally felt like everyone was moving here. My real estate team was taking over 50 calls a month from people considering relocating to the Tampa Bay area, and I started to recognize a pattern. They were almost all high income earners. And as a matter of fact, between 2020 and 2021, Florida attracted 
over 40,000 households earning $200,000 a year or more. We were the highest in the country and our real estate values begin to skyrocket. There was just an article released this week from the Financial Post that said Florida is now the second highest real estate values in the country, only behind California. We just moved ahead of New York. Now that's great for some homeowners, but for other homeowners and residents who are on fixed incomes or moved here years ago because of the low cost of living, it is seriously starting to cause some significant pain. Now with all that being said, what does the future look like here in Tampa? The greater Tampa Bay area and Florida are still a prime destination for post-pandemic migration. Real estate developers, businesses, and residents are still bullish on the area and still continuing to invest. And as long as people dream of soaking up the sun and salty air, Tampa Bay and Florida's future will remain bright. I know for me and my family, we feel like we've made a great decision. Yes, are we experiencing some temporary pain? Yeah, is it lingering longer than we'd like it to? For sure. Are we considering moving? Not a chance in Hades. We love it here. It is in the middle of October. It's 80 degrees today. The sun is shining. This is why we moved. We came for lifestyle. If that is what interests you, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of my contact information is listed down below. There's even a link to my calendars where you can schedule a time that's best for you. Check out these two videos. You are gonna love them if you love this one. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.